Ed O'Keefe, CBS News political contributor and reporter for The Washington Post, joins us from Washington to talk about this a bit more. Hey, Ed, um, what do you make of you, this? I'm great. What, what do you make of this backlash from the president's base burning those hats? And then Ann Coulter is now saying she likes the sound of President Pence. Well, I, I think it's it's an example of some at least limited concern with what the president is up to here. I don't think we've seen widespread uh, defections from from the president. Uh, and you know, what's what's telling is how quickly a lot of Republican lawmakers, uh, when they were informed about this yesterday, sort of said, "Well, uh, you know, this isn't exactly my first choice, but if he's able to cut a deal that deals with this issue and gets us some more." Uh, security spending when it comes to the border with Mexico, perhaps this is a good thing. And that's what I've heard almost universally across Washington, which is if there is a deal to be had, let's cut that deal. So, and so the president and Democratic is, leaders are trying. Yeah. So it sounds like what you're saying is Coulter and some of those far right wing sort of vocal proponents of building the wall may not have as much sway as the president himself among Republicans on this issue? Well, uh, we'll see. Uh, I mean, remember, all they've agreed to do this week is, is keep talking. And so I think once we see details, which we're anticipating maybe about a week, at, you know, 10 days from now, then I think people will have something to sink their teeth into and either be very excited about or much more upset about. But the White House has clearly heard the criticism because you saw the president yesterday two or three times come out and sort of say, you know, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the wall. We're going to be fighting for that. And, and Democrats as well acknowledge that he said he will continue fighting for it and they'll keep fighting against it. So in essence, what he's doing now is I think now at least the second or third time this year putting off the fight over building more of a physical wall between the two countries in hopes of getting another deal on another aspect of the immigration issue. Now, on the DACA deal, it's important to say this is, of course, more than a political question. It affects some 800,000 people. Um, what do we know about the actual policy details of this conversation? All we know is that they are working towards the goal of passing what's called the DREAM Act. It is, a, it is legislation that would essentially provide legal protections for those that are recipients under the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, this program called DACA, potentially plus a few hundred thousand more who are, in essence, children of undocumented immigrants who were brought here when they were young right. through no decision of their own. And the goal is to get that legislation or some version of it passed and couple it with some changes in security protections and enforcement uh, along the border with Mexico. The question, though, and we were pressing leaders for this yesterday, is does this mean that Congress would essentially codify what would be a long and tricky path to citizenship for at least some, if not all, of these people. And, and the reason it's some is because it's important to remember, you'd have to check a few boxes along the way. You'd have to be uh, obtaining or have obtained uh, a, a, you know, education degree of some kind. You have to be working. You obviously can't have a criminal record. And, and it gets more specific from there. That doesn't mean that roughly 800,000, maybe a million people will, would end up getting citizenship one day. But certainly, it's possible that hundreds of thousands of them would. And it's another important piece of clarification here, Stephanie, to remember. For a while, we've been saying it's 800,000 DACA recipients. Mm -hmm. Homeland Security this week clarified and said it's actually closer to about 690,000 people who are currently protected under the program. At at other points, it's been as high as 800,000, but right now it's closer to about 690,000. Still, We're still a heck talking of a lot, about of a lot of people in legal limbo right now. Um, Ed, I want to switch to the attacks for a moment in London. The president is using that attack now to defend his travel ban. So far, we don't know where these attackers or attacker is from, and we don't know who's behind it. Is this a winning strategy for him? Talking about it or, or using that as a way to get his travel ban reauthorized? I mean, either way, look, he may have some piece of information that hasn't been disclosed otherwise to True. the general public, yeah. suggesting that they know who it is. We just don't know. Uh, and, you know, he's perfectly within his bounds to, to release it if he feels the need to, but certainly that's going to upset the British if he's getting out ahead of the information they're releasing publicly. The travel ban is set to expire soon, and he's obviously fighting to continue it on. This, like the border wall, is one of those things that he campaigned on and has promised to supporters he would work towards. So obviously he wants to be seen as at least 
talking about it and pushing to keep it in place. Courts obviously have another idea about it, and it still faces some legal challenges. I think what we saw today, frankly, if you look at the last week or 10 days, has been uncharacteristic of Trump. He got out there again ahead of the news a little bit uh, and is once again trying to talk about a policy that he wants to see implemented that is widely unpopular and has been challenged in court. Well, is it a way for him to speak to his base on a day where he's getting some criticism um, from the far right wing of the party for the DACA deal? Yeah, I think that's part of it for sure. Uh, but obviously he saw this morning's attack, which is a serious issue and, and a concern, of course, for all of us, but, uh, and, and saw that as an excuse to, 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 or a reason to bring this up again. So, you know, that, that, that certainly probably has part of it, uh, something to do with it, because, mm -hmm. you know, he uses Twitter, especially early in the morning, to, to sort of rile the base and, and get them motivated for the day ahead. And uh, today was no exception. Can I go back to the DACA deal for just one minute? And you talked about how the, this potential legal pathway for hundreds of thousands of these dreamers is being discussed along with stringent security measures. Are Democrats going to have to give anything up in this deal? Will there be any infighting in that party over it? There has been some infighting, if not infighting, at least some some hand wringing about the idea that top party leaders are suddenly talking to a president that they've spent really the last two years uh, criticizing and, and running against, in essence. Uh, but, you know, I, I found it striking that outside some of the most progressive members of the House and several members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, most Democrats have said, if there's a deal to be made, let's try to cut it. It's encouraging to see that the president has said he wants to protect these people, that he's willing to do that absent a deal on the border wall, and, and that he's setting aside that fight for a later date. And they said, if we can find a way to protect these people, and it means that we have to do some things along the border that don't include a wall, so be it. Remember, back in 2013, when the Senate approved a big bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform plan, that thing was packed with all sorts of proposals that would expand the use of drones and mm -hmm. airplanes and helicopters along the border, other technology to track people who were crossing illegally. All of that's still on the table set to be authorized, and that is essentially what Democrats have dangled at the White House. They said, look, if you want to do that, we're all for it. What we don't want is that physical wall that you campaigned for, and that's a fight apparently for another day. There have been uh, several presidents that have tried to pass some sort of immigration legislation. Is, this, is it possible that this is going to be Trump's first major legislative victory? Yep, it is. If, if things keep up the way they're going right now, absolutely. And I don't think there's anyone in town who's uh, upset about that necessarily, because frankly, both sides need a win. Everyone in Washington needs to demonstrate that something's getting done here besides confirming a new Supreme Court justice. And since health care failed, tax reform is stalled, and nothing else seems to be moving. If there's a way to get a deal on this that, in essence, protects these people, which is a big priority for Democrats and is something that is supported by a majority of the country, mm -hmm. and get some border security fixes, which is what Republicans and a lot of other independent voters want to see, then that's a deal worth taking, everyone seems to think. Ed O'Keefe, good to see you. Thanks. Take care, Stephanie.